Jay, where's our celebrity guest? I don't know, I feel like we've been waiting here forever. We built the fucking doorway and everything. Please welcome our very special guests from The Ellen Show, it's Rich Evans! <laughs> Demon cop. Enough said. <laughs> Bell Lugosi meets a Brooklyn Gorillas, Duke Mitchell. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, look, man, you know, heroin doesn't pay for itself. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't get sued for this. Is it Lemro? <laughs> oh, it's Lemro! We found a Lemro movie! <laughs> oh, now I'm excited. <laughs> Oh no! Oh! Oh, he's easily defeatable. <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh! Get that punk! Oh. I was raised, raised in a Christian environment. <laughs> it's fine, leave it in. They're looking for you. <laughs> Demon cop. He was typing. <laughs> Are we really gonna watch that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh, that's so sad. No. Oh, Bert. <laughs> yeah! Oh my God! <laughs> I was really looking forward to this. Oh, it's gonna be an afternoon. We're gonna watch some fun bad movies. <laughs> we try and, to warn people. And. An hour into it, I was, I just was, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted, I wanted to have always been dead. That is, that's how I felt. I wanted to have always been dead. Welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God in heaven. That was only 25 minutes long. <laughs> so I was gonna say, how long into the movie did it take you to figure out that this is what the movie was about? An hour and a half. Okay. No more flashbacks. Show Yay! Yay! <laughs> I what think is this? Uh, That's cool. Who, who is that? If that explains common logic. Insultingly, <laughs> <laughs> like frames his man boobs. I just, I just picture the actor going, I, I get to keep my dignity in this, right? Yeah, like, you're not, oh face. yeah, don't even worry about it. Yeah, yeah, don't show my face. Show my boobs. Yeah. <laughs> or my mitts. <laughs> don't show my face. <laughs> we hired you off Craigslist. <laughs> Under mitts. <laughs> Is that a section on Craigslist? Yeah, mitts or moobs. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Our, our homeboy Cameron Mitchell opens and ends the movie. <laughs> These are the files of the damned. Shot in his house, because there was another movie you guys yeah, did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What uh, was the, the tomb? Movie? The tomb. Okay. And it's that same... I, 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 saw, I saw the reading light, and I was like, that's from the tomb. As you know, your uncle's recent studies involved myths of ancient blood-drinking demons. Ay, ay, ay! <laughs> bye, Bird Wars! Bye, Bird Wars! Bye. Bye. There is that part when we see the alien, uh, like, like completely shirtless, and all they had was the alien masks, and, and then they, they had to put, like, body scraping. makeup right, on the right, guy. Right, 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 Who was in charge of that? Props yeah. to them for going through the effort of actually using the body makeup. Yes. That's true, yeah. They could have yeah. put a t-shirt on. <laughs> well, yeah. He Man. disarms him with his arm. <laughs> oh! Somehow they know both of these areas from the lake. And the lake, by the way, is on. We got broken. <laughs> we broke him. <laughs> we broke him. All right, Rich. All right, Rich. <laughs> this makes too much sense. I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> the story's going from A to B to C. Things happen in logical progression. But it's kind of boring anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Are we starting to miss Demon Cop? <laughs> <laughs> At least in Demon Cop, if you didn't like something, it changed every two minutes to no, another movie. They did have to use every inch. Yeah. Every frame of film they shot. Yeah. They're going, we're going to, oh, we're using it, Mr. Ward. Well, that's something to point out, because then the every, credits Using every inch of Burt Ward was a different film. <laughs> 
I just like that Alien Force ends. <laughs> <laughs> In a city called Los Angeles. <laughs> because it's easy to film there. Done! Oh, shit. <laughs> off! Turn it off! <laughs> Fucking done! So the filter they have in the voice, it's like they lowered the volume. Yeah. It's like an Andy Kaufman prank. The movie is. is fucking with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to live right near this bar. I know wow. what this bar is. I'm oh not kidding. Oh my god. Holy shit. Are you an extra in this scene? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you remember a night when weirdos? <laughs> <laughs> Pressing uh, what, the rose happening? on it. Or it's like you, your brain just stops. What are you trying yeah, to think It's of? like you were about to make a joke and then Did your you, brain yeah. just <laughs> shut down. Wow. T depressing. Uh, I, I want to say... Wow, oh, I'm, I'm watching a joke die in your frontal lobe. <laughs> right now. It's like, it has... Depressing. Um... He'll get it out. Just give him a minute. Just give him a second. Uh, Won't you please help, what, folks? <laughs> your donation. If you can will find so Mike's joke for the price of <laughs> for the price please of please mail it to us for the price of a cup of coffee, Shelly you Struthers. can help Mike. Um, uh, what is the building everyone lives in? Apartment. Depressing. Our, our <laughs> what is the building everyone lives in? <laughs> Depressing. Earth. Earth. The building everyone Depressing. lives in is Earth. Wait, wait, wait. That was the joke. What was the joke? Depress what was the joke? I don't know. What happens if you don't make it on time? The on time? There's a time? Wait, there's a time? <laughs> the ticking clock element is when they run out of film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, this is the reason that he lost a day with me in, in the summer of uh, 2019. Six hours. And we're gonna, we're gonna watch all three of them. <laughs> You're gonna watch them. We never wanted to understand a movie more. That is true. We, I don't think we, I've we ever could tried so hard to harder. figure it out. Yeah. It's like trying to crack a code. Yeah. It's the it's worst like... type of engagement. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> it is It is the Antonioni of shitty direct-to-video films where I don't know what the fuck is going on. I, if nothing else, the whole movie is worth it for the scene where Demon Cop throws a table. Yeah. You'll see the clip right here. Wow. The fuck is this? You're not, you're not going to cut away to anything? What are you doing? You're just going to let me look like an idiot? Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. The, the cut to the clip. What clip? What clip? They're telling me I need to go back to the hospital now. Say hi to Ron Ford for me. What grown adult would wear a Pac-Man shirt? <laughs> it feels like what Zack Snyder was trying to do with his Man of Steel movie. <laughs> Superheroes were real, we would be scared of them and they would probably be like assholes and monsters. They would also be real people too, so they would do things for like money. Yeah. So they'd be assholes and monsters <laughs> like real people are. Well, similar to, to RoboCop in that on the surface, you look at RoboCop, but he's a superhero. It's a superhero movie. Yeah. But really the movie is about how evil fucking corporate America is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the boys, you look at it, oh, this is a thing about superheroes? But really, what's going on the, the, the behind the scenes, the story, is this corporation is fucking evil. And so even though this is kind of the norm, like a TV show not having a conclusion, is jarring to me. I wanted an ending. <laughs> I did too! Because, I don't know, I always worry with, with things that, like, any TV series that's got, like, cliffhanger, cliffhanger, you always wonder that it will never get concluded properly because yeah. it'll 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 keep going on and on and then you get to like the fifth season when the show loses its steam and everything just gets bad and, yeah. and you you never have that good ah the end nobody moment. cares anymore yeah just end it uh, hello and welcome to men with beards i'm man with beards today i'm joined by man with beard i'm jay's dad to find out that it was his first movie mm -hmm. Is like I mean it's like right out of the gate like a fully formed kind of vision yeah. and style and uh, shot in 21 days. Really? Yeah. Oh and, my God. and I think sheriff, we've got an issue. And uh, and Kurt Russell says, "Why are you in my breakfast? Why are you in my breakfast?" <laughs> it's just such a great line. Yeah. And you know he pulls that off perfectly. Sheriff Hunt played by uh, played by Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kurt Russell. <laughs> And it does a great job of building that sort of atmosphere, too, of being out in the middle of nowhere, in yeah. the middle of the night. Um, the part when they get raided and uh, Matthew Fox has to go put his horse down. There's that great shot from behind him with the three of them in the foreground just in silhouette and him yeah. walking away. And it's all really, like, misty 
and it just it really has a sense of atmosphere that you don't see in a lot of uh, yeah it's de definitely older westerns but even the more contemporary westerns but when this movie was being shot he wanted um, the landscape to progress so it starts from green sort of sloping hills to flatter green land to like red land to um, it's just like dusty rock to dusty white almost primordial land yeah and primordial like going back to like cave dwellers right so right. It's, it, the you know bright hope to there is is such a visual telling of the story and to me that's the testament to like a good movie is rewatchability when you know after the, th the fifth time watching something that's when you notice the severed hand yeah he although he does use the squeaky door opening sound effects uh -huh. we've used it tons of times on half in the bag right it's used every time anyone opens the door to patty's pub on it's always sunny in philadelphia right that's one of those sound so effects it, that needs to be retired. So it was, it's like the, the sound, if you hear someone fall off a bike yeah. in real life, yeah. you're not, you know, or someone being punched or whatever, you're not hearing that, you know, slapping watermelon sound or whatever it is. Yeah. When, when someone falls off a bike, it's just like, yeah. like it's just, and, but you see it and it's horrible. It's the first movie in a very long time where I literally, my jaw dropped yeah. at, the, at the violence. There's yeah. one particular moment that, yeah. again, we won't show. When they do it up close, I don't love it so much. It kind of sounds like a vacuum cleaner or bad plumbing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I it's suppose. Like that. <laughs> we were inspired by the recent release of the trailer for the motion picture Cats. Yes. To talk about Rudy Ray Moore films. I'm in the minority where I loved Pluto Nash. That's fine. <laughs> but that's another conversation yeah. for another day. That's a review that you'll have to do completely by I'll yourself. <laughs> Can you can can it just be me in both chairs? It can be. Just about. talking about how great Randy Quaid is as the awkward robot. Come on. It's such a strong vision for a movie, and this is not me over exaggerating. Like he knew exactly what he wanted this movie to look like. Yeah. Dolomite, where he, you know, does awkward kung fu and rhymes. Man, move over and let me pass. Oh, they have to be pulling these hush puppies out your motherfucking ass. And then watermelons become a reoccurring thing throughout the movie. We're gonna take this kind of, you know, stereotype and just blow it up to absurdity. Yeah, but literally. Literally, they blow up a watermelon truck at one point. But don't forget <laughs> that also Petey Wheatstraw, when he's having his, his karate training, that's right, cuts, uh, cuts up the up, watermelon. Oh, cuts yeah, up yeah. the watermelon yeah. repeatedly with the sword. Yes. That, that's <laughs> some symbolism right there. We saw Flavor Flav's grandfather. <laughs> Who, who gets Fall into an open grave. <laughs> and then Petey Wheatstraw thinks it's funny just to bury him alive. <laughs> Why not? If this place would catch on fire and they'd tell everybody to haul ass, you would have to make ten trips. <laughs> hey man, you can't talk to my woman like that. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy and Skillet. Leroy and Skillet. Who, by the way, anytime they were on screen, I was worried they were going to have a heart attack just right on camera. They're, they're very sweaty, and I was very concerned for them. I don't know if that part of their pants was just all elastic. <laughs> and how big that man's testicles were. <laughs> I just could not believe. Ponch and balls. They were my favorite 70s cop team. <laughs> Ponch and ball. Show up at the funeral with a machine gun? <laughs> Jesus. Fucking what? <laughs> oh no, Petey. I'll, I will give you this magical scepter if kidding. you marry my, marry my daughter and produce an offspring. Yeah. But what happens when, it, when the devil shows him the photograph? Oh, hell no, man. Uh -uh. <laughs> Can we take a moment and look at prop design? What we need to do is look at P.D. Weekstraw's cane. This isn't suggestive enough. Now spray the magic on her. <laughs> Mostly her face, please. <laughs> no, you can't take it seriously. There it is. Oh, Lordy, how they could love. They Damn, said, who in the hell is that bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Petey Wheatstraw, he's very moral. Uh, he, you know, he wants to do good, but uh, fat people and winos are not real people. Oh. They don't They don't matter. <laughs> I forgot about Rich Effin. <laughs> <laughs> like forgot that he existed? Yeah. There's verses and shit. Are you having a Are you um, having a seizure? I'm an answer to Petey Weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's put it on the wine hole and see how it fits. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
That's what he gets for trying to fuck with the devil. Yeah. You can only turn your hat so far sideways to hide the fact that you're 48, okay? But I'm 52. <laughs> fuck them! How dare anyone cross Disney? Fuck them! But <laughs> fucking goddamn it, we're fucking mad about this! Fuck you, Sony! Fuck off! <laughs> How dare anyone not allow Disney to maintain their media monopoly on every character ever created? Well, either way, I have to say, Ian McDermott looks great as Emperor Palpatine. I'm so excited that he's back. Oh, no, that's not him. It, it's a toy. They, they just photoshopped a toy. A, a toy? Yeah, like they took a, a high-res image that already existed of a toy and they just they just put it on the plate. and even the new footage was all things we've seen before star destroyer c-3po's every shot is either a ship or a lightsaber and that's very cool it, it is very cool i think i'm just kind of sick of it it's like he's bitching about star wars is he alt right i love star wars very cool very cool very cool very cool rich is, is that someone else's credit card No. Aren't we supposed to be going into a recession soon? I think there's a downloadable version too. It's not in alphabetical order. They're just listed randomly. FX plus. FX now. FX plus plus. FX now plus plus plus. MTV minus. HGTV EX TV plus. TLC Instant Now Wow. Food Network to go. Swamboy, Swamboy. Stroller voins is no swamble bow to our Disney overlords. Hail the mouse, hail the mouse. What other amazing content is coming to Disney Plus that can only be seen on Disney Plus? So you have to sign up for Disney Plus right away, sign up for Disney Plus. Falcon and the Winter Soldier TV show. What if TV show? WandaVision TV show. Hawkeye TV show. Moon Knight TV show. That's fucking insane that so many TV shows will be designated to one streaming service. It's like I have to sign up for it or I'll literally die. I literally just shit myself. Mike, if you knew about the industry so much, how come you weren't invited to the opening of Galaxy's Edge? Yeah, you don't have a comeback for that, do you, motherfucker? We'll leave you with these publicity photos of the new Galaxy's Edge theme park provided to us by Disney State News. Enjoy. Oh, so this is what a book is. He is threatened by a rival school's owner. He puts his teachings into action through spectacular car chases. <laughs> that, that's not an exciting shot. <laughs> for for a, a car chase scene? Yeah. It's like rule number one. Going away from the camera is more exciting than coming towards it. Oh, <laughs> well, my velour tracks. <laughs> It's ruined. It weighs it's ruined. Pounds oh, yeah. You can see both of them. <laughs> <laughs> struggling. Seeing that autograph, it just makes me think of the awkward moment that happened when... <laughs> Here, here's, here's James Doohan, right? He's, he's 85 years old, and he's signing autographs at like a table at a Star Trek convention, wondering where his life went wrong. And then this... And then some asshole walks up with through dead eyes and says, can you sign this? And it's just like... Oh. <laughs> James Doohan, Scotty from Star Trek, oh. in case we forgot from, from the, the front, front of, of the box. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 oh boy. <laughs> He's still trumped over. It, it's been printed on a, a home DVD printer. It either traveled through time or it is a Neil Breen film. Whoa. Paging Mr. Herman. Uh, it's like a VHS rip, and it's it's trying to kill itself as the video goes <laughs> along. 
the time of filming, both these guys are like 23. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> that woman's, that woman's being, 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 that woman's being Wait, what? Oh <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> He's using his shoes. He's catching Chinese stars in his shoes. Everybody get him now! <laughs> oh, <no! laughs> <laughs> <laughs> He's standing there. He's just standing in a circle. This is amazing. <laughs> They're at the deli and they have their number. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're waiting for their number to be called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> number 22. Oh, okay. so, oh. Everything is ugly. Yeah. yeah. Like, like yeah. literally every piece of clothing, every hairstyle, every, every person, bit of fashion, every <laughs> wall decoration, every bit of architecture, everything is disgustingly ugly. Every yeah. mustache. He's got a kind of vengeful spirit about him because he uh, he goes after that one guy. He probably just has a Napoleon complex, right? <laughs> Possibly. I'm pissed off that I'm so tiny. Well, Jay, you would know. <laughs> oh. uh. I'm pissed off that I'm so tiny. Yeah! Yes! <laughs> you didn't let us down. Now we got the people's court theme playing. <laughs> But one of my favorite parts so, about that is when they get to the big city and you can just see masses of people on the corners watching the film shoot. It's the most exciting thing to happen in Ohio since that river caught on fire. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the footage looks like shit, right? Yeah. So they filmed the movie in Akron, Ohio, and then they put it on like a VHS tape. They flew that to LA. <laughs> they put it on a TV, and then, and then filmed they filmed it. the TV in LA. <laughs> so the whole movie was shot in LA. That's, <laughs> That's brilliant. Ah, good thing his mustache protected him from <laughs> 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 from head traumas, like his afro. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, be careful! You fucking drown! They're chasing each other through a waterfall! <laughs> they like end up in the Antarctic. Whoa, whoa. Look at the camera. <laughs> this is kind of romantic though. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's still this. <laughs> He probably actually died. <laughs> <laughs> they just worked that into the movie <laughs> as an excuse. <laughs> this is the distributor's like, here's another 10,000. Kill someone. I, I love that he goes to jail. There's, yeah, so, yeah. there's yeah. so many movies where the movie's over and I'm wondering, how the hell did this not end in like a five year long legal battle? Yeah. yeah, there's no consequences usually. Like every movie where a ghost kills somebody, who's getting the blame for those murders? <laughs> <laughs> You just tell the cops it was the ghost. It's it like, <laughs> no, it was the pumpkin demon officer. <laughs> yeah, it kind of yeah, so it's a big celebration, no smoking. And uh, <laughs> then. Um... <laughs> She's having a stroke. She's happy. She's being choked. Oh. She's experiencing the death. Yeah, I get it. Ow, my boobs. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is embarrassing. <laughs> uh, my clairvoyance tells me she was killed. But <laughs> <laughs> so what? I'm I'm retired. Oh my oh god. god. He's so oh. bad. There was such a long pause. He had to remember his line. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does that hard cut to him looking miserable? <laughs> Rich, you guys have the same shirt. <laughs> There's a nice cute touch when they go into the costume store and the first thing you see on the wall on oh, the right yeah. hand side when they go in are completely inaccurate Star Trek uniforms. Star Trek, Star Trek uniforms! Yeah. Beam me up. <laughs> The most coherent Neil Breen movie we've ever gotten. You know what? <laughs> <laughs>
Is that sarcasm? <laughs> no! AI. Artificial intelligence. Thank you. <laughs> Why haven't you contacted <laughs> <laughs> That beer is amazing. <laughs> the best performance in the movie is this hair in the scene <laughs> where the wind is behind <laughs> The camera. Are we on. rolling? Yeah, yeah, we're rolling, you know. <laughs> Sabrina, we're rolling. Yes, I'm interested. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. No. Yeah. Those are fake yeah. rubber rats. Yeah, Wait, what? The it's rubber rats. Rubber rats next to the It's supposed to look like a filthy alley. Yeah, so he put rubber rats. <laughs> That's his friends. That's the homeless man's friends. Why is that painting there? <laughs> this looks like a scene from Three's no Company. <laughs> I don't even want you anymore! All I want is the drugs and the money! <laughs> <laughs> don't want you anymore! the only one that can take down Neil Breen is another Neil Breen. <laughs> it's actually kind of interesting, really, because Double Down, he's just the badass. Yeah. It's, fant it's fantasy Neil Breen. And then you get, like, two pass-through, the last one we watched. Yeah. And he still thinks very highly of himself, but, like, the crazy has started to creep in. It takes a dark turn in that movie, where he just comes across as a guy who wants to see the world burn. Right. Yeah. And in here, in Twisted Pair, it's like he started to become self-aware of that. Yeah. And so he took all of the negative aspects of his own personality that he's developing. It's like, ah, oh, that's just a separate character. He's now. trying to like exercise it. He's yeah. trying it's like he's trying to exercise his crazier thoughts. <laughs> he's not self-aware as a filmmaker. No. Yeah. But he's like it's like he's becoming self-aware that he's crazy. Yeah. 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 Speaking about pasted, there's a lot of like phony mustache. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, man. Why did oh wait, Mike's not here. It's it's like uh, Spock. Oh. <laughs> in, in, in the mirror universe. They should vocalize the little clippy guy with Neil Breen's voice. <laughs> It looks I... like you're having trouble here. Oh, man. <laughs> what do you want? Do How can I help you? <laughs> what if you, you could do like... Uh, I bought the novelization of Twisted Pair. It just says, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> over and over. <laughs> it goes on for like 700 pages. <laughs> you, you would find the novelization of Twisted Pair on Amazon. Be like, like buy it right away and you open it up and it's all lorem ipsum. Anyone? No? Fuck! Brad Stein played Detective. <laughs> and it's twice! He's happy pacing! Detective! Astro Eagle is Eagle! But it's already been established that he's like a super being, and yeah. that. Can you say a super being or a super being? Being. Super being. Super what being? Is he? Super Clearly being. He's a super being. <laughs> Other nights, Bert Pesci would have ran away with it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Awkwardly ran away with really it. Really fast. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating that you can have a mystery movie with one suspect, <laughs> and there's still a red herring. <laughs> the only red herrings were at the craft service table. <laughs> and James... And James... James Newham is James, shoving him in a duffel bag James to take Duhan, home. Yeah, he ate them all. <laughs> Spooky clowns scare me! And I want to ask you something. Sure. I want to see if you notice something. There's a big difference between a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. And I'm pretty fucking certain they digitally de-aged these kids. Whoa. And, uh, and, and altered the pitch of their voices. Oh. Someone, someone uh, working in a, in a cubicle, a sea of cubicles, digitally de-aging That was 1,500 children. visual effects artists' job for the last year. Huh. This is what we do with movies now. We don't just make a movie. We have to throw in all sorts of needless subplots and special effects to justify them. Hey, movies are just gonna be 
carnival rides. Yeah. Where there there is no like it's just like this thing happens, this thing happens, this thing happens. Yeah. It is a giant cocaine fueled mess. Yeah. So we went over all that. We talked about the first movie. And there's a lot of talk, and I'm like, oh my gosh, teenagers are gonna be so bored. <laughs> um, and, I'm, and then I then I had this like overwhelming sense of dread that I was gonna have to sit through it's an coming. hour long. <laughs> hour-long special effects bonanza at the end in order to make up for yeah. the, the effort that you had to sit through of watching people talk. And I'm like, I like the parts where people talk more. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not going to say that CGI monsters can't be scary, mm. but I'm going to say in this movie, the CGI monsters are not scary. Well, I, I know the conversation that was had at the studio. Here it goes. Okay. Ready? Yeah. In the book, there's a giant spider, but people like the clown. <laughs> Clown spider. <laughs> it's like Man of Steel. This is like the horror version of Man of Steel for me. Wow. His little cameo. It was like uh, Stan Lee before Stan Lee. You know, he show up in his movie. So it's nice to see him in this again. It's not a very good actor. That's fine. He got run over by a car. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a pass. It felt overstuffed, uh, but also underdeveloped. I, I don't know. I. <laughs> But this was so changed from the book. That's the thing. There's so much from, uh, in matter. this that isn't in the book. Jay? And there's the stuff that's in the book that clown. they- Clown. Spooky clown. Spooky clown scare you. Get your popcorn, watch, and leave. Why are you still talking? <laughs> that's your framework. It's, I guess not, it's, it's not a plot. It's spooky clown scenes. And you have to have them strategically placed throughout the running time, yeah. and then you say, how do we fill this gap between these two <laughs> spooky clown scenes? Well, how about this, this scene from the book? Yeah. That'll be kind of easy to shoot. <laughs> what, do we, what do we put over here? I don't know. Like a modern audience, go, they go to an advanced test screening of like The Shining. What a fucking nightmare that would be. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> so boring. Just keeps typing that one sentence over and over again. <laughs> what kind of book is that gonna be? <laughs> Oh, no, 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 that's because he's crazy. Jack Nicholson's performance did not indicate that, He's way too that, subtle that in that he, film. He had some kind of problem mentally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just burned out. Oh. The most important part of our Gremlins commentary track is when we pitch Gremlins 3. Yeah, and uh, we, sh we, should, we should actually start off with that, because I had a couple of new thoughts Oh, okay. On Gremlins 3. Well, the basic idea, we recorded that commentary track the day that Trump got elected president. Did we? We did. Uh, that's like the first thing we mentioned. It was the day that, that it was announced that he was president. Huh. And uh, obviously in Gremlins 2, there's the Daniel Clamp character, which is... Uh, partially based on, on Donald Trump from that era. We'll get Very that. much so. Well, but it's also Ted Turner. He's like a, an amalgam of Dump, Trump and Ted Turner. He's a, yeah, he's a real estate. The Ted Turner part, it comes with the, the colorization of old black and white movies. Yeah, running a TV yeah. network and but, all that um, stuff. But uh, there, there is the Marla character, mm. uh, who was based on Marla Maples, oh, Trump's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump's second wife. <laughs> um, but the point being, in our Gremlins 3 pitch, we said that Daniel Clamp is now President of the United States. Yes. And the Gremlins take over the White House. Uh, that was our idea. I think it was the, the, the country. I think we were going big. Oh, okay. I just remember we were going to show them like like in, in the Senate and just yeah. yelling at oh, each sure, other. Oh, sure, 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 sure. It starts at the White House and it spreads from there. Oh, okay. And Billy Peltzer is the official, like maybe he's the official president portrait painter or... <laughs> He's in charge of some some department that has to do with art. Sure. Um, he's moved up in the ranks. He's a small town, New York City sky, uh, skyscraper, country. Sure. So it starts in the White House and it spreads from there. I thought Gremlins 1, simple small town. Gremlins 2, automated uh, uh, skyscraper, the first smart building. Yeah, before before smart things yes. was a thing. Yes, was that coined then? I don't know, but it, it was like, wow. Yeah. I said smart, and she does figure quotes too. Mm -hmm. The Clamp Center is the most advanced smart building in America. And then I thought gremlins into technology. Gremlins have, have, uh, have taken over people's Twitter accounts. <laughs> and then I pictured just gremlins just walking down the street looking at their phones. <laughs> they don't really cause a ruckus like, like in, in physical reality, they just do on the internet. Oh. 
They are so the, it's a reflection of reality. Yes, then. yes. They are they are the quintessential internet trolls. Oh, okay. And they just sit on computers all day and just like harass people. <laughs> <laughs> they hack into your, your bank accounts, into your Twitter accounts. They, yeah, they, they hack your Twitter account and say gay slurs. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, Very uh, similar to now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They went back to Joe Dante and said, M maybe you had something to do with why it was successful. Do whatever you want. Uh, which leads to possibly the weirdest sequel to like a big uh, blockbuster movie ever made. I was an uh, anticipating this movie as a kid. I was so excited for it. And I would always read Roger Ebert's movie reviews every Friday in the Chicago Sun-Times. And I remember distinctly, I opened it up to the arts and entertainment section, the Chicago Sun-Times, and I was like, Ebert, Ebert's gonna talk about Gremlins too. And that said two and a half stars. And I was like, what? <laughs> How can this be? Mogwais turn into Gremlins, the Gremlins multiply, and then they have to kill them. Yeah. Exact same structure, the difference being that the plot in this movie does not matter whatsoever no. because this is a movie that Joe Dante didn't want to make. Uh, they told him to do whatever he wanted, so he used the opportunity to, uh, one, just make a, a, a gag a minute Looney Tunes, live action yes. Looney Tunes movie that also mocks everything about the first film. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a very short list of movies that kind of do that, where they have this sort of meta quality or like are critical of the movie that came before yeah, it. Empire Strikes Back. One. Oh, of course, yeah. The, no, no, no uh, reservations about making fun of Star Wars. No. Are you thinking of the Last Jedi? Oh yes. Yeah, sorry, no. that went full Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Archery Channel. The guy comes out. He's dressed like Robin Hood for no reason. He snaps his bow. And it's funny because the whole reason that Joe Dante was hesitant about doing a Gremlins two was like how much of a hassle it was working with the Gremlins in the first movie. And then he does this one, and he's like, fuck it, let's have a thousand times more gremlins. But the initial three Mogwai, that, four Mogwai, yeah. that come out of uh, Gizmo are all, one's like black and white, one's orange. Yeah. They're, they're, and I always attributed that to the fact that um, the water from the water fountain hit Billy's painting, trickled, oh. trickled down the painting and hit Gizmo. So it, like the, the, the paint mixing in with the water affected how they... Yes, because okay. all those colors are in the painting. I have never thought about that. That's, That's what I always... These things were always in my head. Um, <laughs> when you see the water, though, in like high definition and the Blu-ray, it's just clear water. Mm -hmm. And also, my theory is disrupted because in the first film, the water that knocks on Gizmo is in a cup of oh, Billy Peltzer's paintbrushes. That's true. So that just throws that theory out the window. Son of a bitch. I need answers. <laughs> um, but I always thought, hey, that was clever. Uh, Robert Picardo, of course, Gremlins 2. He plays Forrester, the security chief. And, uh, you know, it's a big role in the film, but he's the antagonist, minor character. Billy Peltzer, of course, is the star, played by Zach Galligan. And then years later, Star Trek Voyager, Robert Picardo is, of course, the holographic doctor, and Zach Galligan is in an episode. Who's that? One of Starfleet's finest. Take us to Voyager. Uh, and he has, like, one line. Really? That's it? Where am I? So it's just a little scene. And I was like, hey, that's the Gremlins guy. <laughs> and, why is it? and then Robert Picardo's there. Yeah. So I wanted to ask Robert Picardo, like, when you were, did you, did you even remember? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, when you run into somebody like that, yeah. like Robert Picardo's worked with so many people on yeah. so many projects. Um, I was like, how, it's like, oh you, yeah, we were in Gremlins too. I was like, do you chit chat with, with these people? Like, hey, you remember Gremlins? That was a great time. Yeah. All the slime everywhere. Get back to work, Picardo. We're starting the next take, <laughs> talking about gremlins. Uh, I was like, do you ever do that? And then he's like, he's like, oh, sure. And they started talking about Phoebe Cates' Broadway play. And, <laughs> and I he just went off the rails. And I, was, and I was like, talk about Zach Galligan and talk about Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> talk about the things I want you to talk about. Talk about the things I want you to talk about. Are you talking about the mimes? No, oh, okay. not the mimes. I'm talking about a more subtle detail. There is a a golden retriever that's overgrown that's that's on the street eating garbage. Oh. And and I wanted to say is that a reference to the ultimate fate of Billy Peltzer's dog? <laughs> uh, what was his dog's name? Um, um oh, shit. Barney. Barney, yeah, yeah. And I was like is that where is that a joke? An inside joke is that where Barney ended up? Like the family got rid of him once Billy left. <laughs> I never even noticed homeless. that dog before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the dog is eating garbage. <laughs> like it's a, it's a it's a stray. 
Yeah. But it, it, it's it's the same kind of dog, and it looks overgrown. Interesting. The Peltzers just got rid of Barney. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's looking for Billy, and that was his one chance. So I don't know. If it wasn't addressed in the commentary. Then it's not addressed in the commentary. Only one and man. And I've never even noticed it. Only one man can answer that question, and that's Joe Dante. And it's not like it was a real street. Yeah. It's, it's a film set. It's clearly the back lot set, yeah. And, and, there, and a dog isn't just on the back lot set, on camera. It's intentionally placed there by a person that works with movie animals. Right. Oh, they're, they're making fun of the merchandising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're referencing the fact that the rules don't make any sense, which is a great scene in this movie where they're yeah. all uh, doing the, the internet nitpicky thing and picking apart the fact that nothing about the lore of the gremlins makes any sense. What, what if they're eating in an airplane and they cross a time zone? I mean, it's always midnight somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> when Leonard Malton shows up. <laughs> oh yeah, that part And they, that's when the fourth wall breaks. He's, Leonard Mar Malton is reviewing the first Gremlins because uh, in reality he gave it a bad review. Yes. So the, the fact that he has a sense of humor about being in this one is funny, but and the Gremlins when... attack him for giving the film a bad review. Yeah, he changes his mind. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a Ted, it's a Ted. <laughs> Wait a minute. And I remember seeing this in the theater, and I remember vividly that moment in the film where the film breaks, and people in the theater being like, "Oh fuck!" He pulled a he pulled a, a joke on the audience, and that's something that you can't get away with very often in movies. So this is something just relatively recently I've noticed in a lot of Joe Dante's movies. It's the cinematography and the use of shadows. Uh, John Hora, I think, is the cinematographer. He did this movie, did the original movie. He did like the Howling and the Burbs. Uh, he loves he loves shadows and he loves uh, shadows cast of Venetian blinds. I don't know if you noticed that in this movie. There's a lot of that. When the Mohawk turns into the Spider Gremlin, we just see its shadow. So it's like you just see the legs coming out, and it's like that'd probably be really easy to do if you're just filming a shadow because you don't have to see it like actually coming out of its body. It, it's it's it is the perfect sequel, and and in a way, if it had just continued on as a sequel, like just just dark, you know. Gremlins, Gremlins are back. They take over a, you know, a, a hot skyscraper. Would it have been as magical? Oh um, no! I mean, you could do a version of this exact story without all like the meta gags and without going so far with the Looney Tunes stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you would have a pretty standard sequel. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it special and what makes it stand out is all the the extra stuff that went into it. I mean, the movie starts with a Looney Tunes cartoon. Marla's drinking wine. Billy's drinking Molson. Who's drinking the Jolt Cola? Uh, oh, that would be Marla. I'm gonna say that's Marla, just based on her personality. S wine chased by Jolt? I'd say. I need answers. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the bad gremlin's attacking Dick Miller and he's like kind of stumbling down the street. And I always thought it was just like a bad special effect, not, not the bat, but just the people, like just a, like a bad scene. And I was like, why is everyone just like walking, they just film people walking and they, they yeah. forgot the special effect was there. And then I was like, oh no, that's brilliant. The, the fact that nobody's paid attention they're to They're just New Yorkers. Right. They go, they just don't care. <laughs> and the fact that there is a, a winged lizard monster attacking Dick Miller in broad daylight and New Yorkers are just, one guy doesn't even look up. Yeah. He just pushes past him. Uh, we're, inv we're advising all clients to put their money in canned goods and shotguns. <laughs> Um, yeah. Gremlins, when it's like about the spirit of anarchy and destruction and fucking things up, like it's the perfect vehicle to do something like that with a sequel. Yes, it's, it's almost poetic because yeah. it's, it's, it's meta in a way that he is, Joe Dante is the gremlin <laughs> sure. of his own production. Sure, yeah. And that's the genius part of it. <laughs> well, Jay, before we go watch this film, let's see the Rotten Tomatoes score. Oh, oh my God! God! Uh, this is a film that's produced by Redbox. Yes, because every every outlet has to like produce their own original content now. Even Redbox, and similar to his movie Gotti that came out, that was produced by MoviePass, which recently died. So I think it's that like old school movie star ego thing. Okay where he wanted that movie and this movie to be in theaters for a little bit before being dumped. Um, so it came out in theaters. The it, Fanatic did? The Fanatic came out in theaters opening day. Uh, it made $3,000. Uh, it played on 52 screens, which was an average of about $60 per theater. 
Wow, space cops made more money. <laughs> That's true. It literally is true. <laughs> he's a movie star. I don't know if that excuses the other 15 movies he's done in the last two years. We don't want to use the R word, uh, regal, because his performance was, was stunning. <laughs> As Robert Downey Jr. told us in blackface, <laughs> never go full regal, right? I found his performance mesmerizing. Well, that's what, that's the thing. I thought he was really good. Legitimately good? Yeah. It's so service level, but it's like an acceptable enough movie, but then you drop John Travolta's performance in it, and that's what elevates the entire thing. Uh, elevates it to what, comically bad? Comical, yeah. I thought John Travolta nailed it. <laughs> and not in a. In but a, what I'm, is it? And not in a I'm laughing at him embarrassing himself way. And this is, I think, where we're going to disagree. I guess so. I yeah. really enjoyed his performance as a person who is, I don't know, barely on the spectrum and falling off the edge. To me, it felt like. Uh, like the whole movie was made as like a prank on John Travolta to embarrass him. <laughs> and as we've probably discussed before, most actors are crazy and they love themselves. And when you let them uh, just loose, it leads to disaster. I've had it stuck in my head since I saw the movie like a week ago where he keeps going, poppycock. <laughs> Every year there's like that one or two movies that comes out that the internet kind of like collectively tries to make like the new best worst movie. Yeah. Like, do you remember Nine Lives, the talking cat movie with Kevin Spacey? Oh man, this is the new terrible movie. And people have been trying to do that with this movie. And I think it's, it, it's not that bad. I think John Travolta is what makes it fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> John Travolta came in my house. With, with, <laughs> with a, a Jason Voorhees with mask. With a bad wig on. Um, <laughs> it's like watching a, a, a moderate train wreck. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where you're like, I, that, I see how that could have been prevented. <laughs> All right, see you next year. Okay. Do you want it? No, I hate split pea. Maybe I'll give it to a trick or treater. Oh, there you go. Put it in their bag. <laughs> I got a rock. <laughs> Everything that's in this movie is practical. Yeah. And that's amazing. When uh, they go into Linda Blair's room and there's shit just flying around the room. It's like records and sheets and yeah. furniture is moving. And it's all really there, the hospital stuff, which oh. is, uh, people say this movie's not shocking or scary anymore. All the stuff with them doing tests on, on Reagan to try and figure out what the fuck is wrong with her. Oh. It's the most chilling stuff in the movie. And it's all just shot so matter of fact. Yeah, it was, there were two movies. It was that and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. That I was like, okay, so it's gonna be like a sunny Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing scarier than having a family member or yourself have something wrong and no one can tell you what it is. Yes, and that, that that's the brilliance of Ellen Burstyn's performance. Yeah. Because she's just so beat down oh, by God. it. Oh, God. And the fact that there's probably more than one demon in there right. comes out in different voices, and that's something they play up in Exorcist 3, which, yes. which we'll get to. The, the old age makeup on Max von Sydow is possibly the best ever because it just looks like he looks it's now. It's crazy, and like the fact that the makeup still holds up. Yeah, and in the, in the, in the bright Iraqi sunlight, yeah. it looks perfect. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's all kudos to Dick Smith on that one. The opening scene is in Iraq, and mm -hmm. it's like, we're going to film it in Iraq. Yeah. We're not just going to go to some desert. We're going to film it in Vancouver. Like, no. <laughs> no, we're filming it in Iraq, and yeah. I like the stipulation that uh, uh, in order to film there, they had to hire uh, a lot of uh, Iraqi crew members. Oh, right, and then it taught them how to make films. They, it taught them how to make films, Hollywood. and specifically, they wanted to learn how to make fake blood. <laughs> <laughs> so Freakin's like, all right, we can do that. Sure. <laughs> Because Jane Fonda in the 70s, everybody. Starred in Barbarella, but uh, don't worry about this <laughs> capitalist pig bullshit. Well, that was an art film, Barbarella. <laughs> and Jason Miller, who's just so... There's one shot of him sitting in a chair in this movie. That is how I feel most of the time. <laughs> hey, Mike, did you see Martin Scorsese is trending on Twitter? Oh, no, we lost Marty? Oh, no, he's still alive. But people are very upset with him. Why? 
for being absolutely right about everything. Mike, if I'm gonna trust anyone's opinion on quality film, it's not gonna be Martin Scorsese. It's gonna be some guy that claims he has an emotional connection to Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mm -hmm. People have been crazy since the dawn of time. <laughs> That's true. It's people that hadn't seen the movie saying this movie is going to uh, embolden uh, uh, white terrorism or this movie is going to uh, empower incels and all this stuff. And now the movie's out and the movie is about the importance of mental health care mm -hmm. and classism. And now yes. all these people that were whipped up into a frenzy look like complete buffoons. And I think that's wonderful. But the rest of it felt like baby's first taxi driver. Everything must go. Uh itself is thematic. Yes. Uh, it's, for, it's for the movie. If you didn't notice that, we notice things like that because we're film experts. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix's character is just sort of like, has mental problems from the beginning. So then there's really nowhere for his character to go for no. the rest of the movie. Wrong. Oh. His character, his character transforms into the Joker. How is this guy gonna be a criminal mastermind? But maybe he is underneath all that medication. And so See, once I wish he, they had built that out, up more, though. They spent two hours building it no, up. No, they don't mention it. And that's the comparison people are making, is this would be a rallying cry for, for the, the basement-dwelling incel. Which is not. Yeah. No, because those people are, are, go out and just shoot people just to be awful. Um, when you think about it, the Joker only killed anybody who like, was awful and deserved it. Yeah. It's the complete inverse of the Batman story. Oh, and that's, sure. that's another thing I liked about it too, is that once you see like, you know, um, Thomas Wayne as, as like a villain to the, to the, the common people, yeah. um, he's rich, that all these people are rich in their tuxedos and it's like they hate the rich stuff. Um, and they're the bad guys and in inverse is Batman is, you know, the good people of Gotham, I've got to save them from those dirty criminals. Right. And, and you're taking that exact story and just polar inverting it. Yeah. I applaud them for making a movie that is like a big wide release movie that is a stripped down character driven mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. Even if it didn't completely work for me, more movies like this, please. Do you mean specifically in the comic book realm? or Just, just in, in general, general, we don't oh, get yeah. movies like this. Like, That's I would have true. liked this movie more if it wasn't connected to Batman, if it wasn't a Joker movie. I think, in my opinion, the, the, the Kevin Feige Marvel Universe in, under Disney, that, that's its own thing. I think this artsy DC it should be the reboot of the entire DC universe. Start from scratch right here. Is, is, is Joaquin Phoenix in every frame of the movie? <laughs> Just about. I'm so glad Halloween is your favorite holiday. I wish there was a Star Trek holiday so I could force all my fucking friends to talk about Star Trek. <laughs> I think they all wrote off a third Exorcist film as like, uh, you know, it yeah. almost becomes a joke at that point, like Jaws 3. Oh yeah, it's like, it's like Jaws a, 4, The Revenge. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame he didn't win an MTV Movie Award. Did those exist at the time? Yeah. 1990? That was okay. the first year. Oh. Best portrayal of a demon, <laughs> Brad Dourif. And Jim Carrey in The Mask. <laughs> and the winner is Jim Carrey in The Mask. It's not a human story. It's not humanity. Even though it's about good versus evil. It, in a strange way, that's, I think that's why I like it. Because it's so like cold and clinical. We see the steps, the famous steps. Yeah. The, the tubular bells music kicks in for like just a second. And then this uh, horror droning sound uh, overpowers it. And it's like, I don't know, I always interpret that as William Peter Blatty trying to say like, this isn't The Exorcists. This is a completely different movie now. The studio made me use this music. <laughs> I'm gonna use it for one second. Traps them like Freddy Krueger traps them. <laughs> Except it's not depicted as a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> Sausage pizza, actually. The, the yeah. little meatballs. Oh, the little meatball heads. And then him kicking the door down to the church, <laughs> saying, you, 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 let's go. <laughs> I'm assembling a team. I'm assembling a team. <laughs> We need 16 priests, as many priests as we can fit in that room. <laughs> um, let's go. I have an interesting fact. Oh. You know, you know the bird in the, in the box? The priest was repairing his wing? Yeah. Same bird that flew into Fabio's face on that roller coaster. 
I was mad at Fabio for appearing in The Exorcist 3. <laughs>